Hello. And today we'll be playing Remember the Flowers. I'm about to play the second interlude for the VN. I think it's about 40 minutes long. And we'll be seeing more of Lance at Resum. Well, it's actually, actually being taken to Wilson, but, you know, like, see more Lance and, and the Weasel, um, what was he, um, what's his name again? Artemis. And this is something new I hear. I don't know what that is. So I downloaded the latest update from September, so chapter 16 is added now. So you got the interlude right here, the second one. You got the first one here. So once we finish this interlude, we have like three more chapters ahead. I'm going to go ahead and do the end of it now. Alright, Lance. It's time to get up. I feel a jolt run through my neck. Making me slam my head against the window. I'm so dazed that it takes me, by, that it takes me a moment to remember where I am. It's dark in the car. We must be going through a tunnel. Artemis smiles at me as he stuffs something in his coat pocket. Sorry about that, you weren't roused, no matter what I tried, so I decided to put that collar to good use. I make my animosity clear with a, with a loud growl. I find that hard to believe. Come now, no harm, no foul. That hurt like a bitch. I want my neck. Perhaps my intel you was wrong, yet again, that was a relatively Weak current. It's not very smart to mess with someone who has nothing to lose. Oh, please. We both know that's not true. Is that right? I know you're just a pet, just as petty as the rest of us. If you work with uh, with us, you can get back all you get back at all the people who screw you over, including you. On to his last. You know what, sure. Why not? Once we get you settled in, I give you permission to try me. Just know that I don't play fair. I don't need you to tell me that. Where are we, anyway? We're en route to your new home. Besides the brief flashes of lights on the ceiling, I, can see, I can't see anything. The walls look rather cramped with only two lines to drive on. An underground tunnel, huh? How fitting. And why is that? I just think it's a fitting way to get there. It looks dang and depressed to me. They used to feel right at home. Look, we're almost through. The weasel slowly pulls us in before handing me a pair of sunglasses. Put these on. It's wider than you think. Hmm. This mouth can only mean he's toying with me again. If I refuse to wear them, it'll hurt my eyes. If I take them, I'll be doing what he says. I really do hope that I get the chance to kill him one day. With look what I decided to put them on. I'm used to playing along to try to survive. As well as we suddenly start rising upwards. Light starts to pour in through an opening above us. Even with the sunglasses, it takes a moment for my vision to adjust to sunlight. It's bright and sunny today with very few clouds in the sky. In front of me are several buildings that I think are skyscrapers. I see the dome light structure and casting everything like I was previously told, but it's not nearly as dreary as I envisioned. It's so joined that I dropped my guard enough for Artemis to catch me by surprise. 
He chuckles lightly with no hint of malice. See? Not so depressing, is it? No, not really. This is really wisdom? It is, yes. Welcome to the business, Lance Crager. He helps me unbuckle my seatbelt so that we can exit the vehicle. The air is fresh and there's a nice breeze flowing through my fur. What's most surprising is how much grass there is. My, someone's enamored, are they? What do you think? It's weird, it's nothing like I pictured it or have been told. So it's all the dangers of propaganda. I assure you, we have the people's best interests at heart. I believe it when I see it. I know enough about this place to be skeptical. If that's your prerogative, then there's nothing I can do. At least try to enjoy yourself, won't you? What do you say? Welcome back, sir. Someone from behind catches our tits immediately putting me on edge. This is a big raccoon, a small one at that. He's carrying a clipboard under his arm has a bag slung around his shoulder. I try to lower my tension if need if need be, I could take him in a fight. There you are, Jasper. Sorry to make you come out on your day off. It's no big deal. I just wasn't expecting you to come back so soon. Thankfully our new recruit has been rather cooperative. Is that right, Mr. Crager? I go out and try to ignore him. You'll have to excuse him. He just woke up from a nap and is rather cranky, it seems. Ah, uh, don't worry, Mr. Crager. I'm the same way. His voice is rather high and mildly irritating to my ears, mainly because he's trying to be so friendly with me. I glance toward the runt. He really expects me to answer. Artemis is smiling while his eyes remain cold before gesturing to his coat pocket. In annoyance, I spit on the ground before turning to face him. I just want to get settled in. It's been a long trip. Don't you have a dissection to attend to or something? Jasper tilts his head with a confused look on his face. Artemis actually laughs. What a morbid sense of humor. Again, please forgive me, Jasper. He's got a lot to learn about how we do things. Oh, absolutely. Here, let me get your car parts, sir, that I can assist you. You're too kind, Jasper. I am admittedly a tad worn out after driving for so long. It's no trouble at all. Seriously, it's one of the few times I get an excuse to drive, after all. You do have a point, as you know. I'll take any excuse to avoid the ports just to, just so I can go for a spin. Artemis hands over the keys of his car to the excitable raccoon. Take your time. I'll give Mr. Quaker a small tour of the premises before we head inside. Orna, be back soon. I can't help but stare at Artemis. Either he really is a good actor or he's just... On it, be back soon. I can't help but stare at Artemis. Either he is really a good actor or he's being genuinely nice to this guy. After the raccoon drives away, I decide to speak up. Who the hell was that? Artemis turns his cold gaze at me once again. That is Jasper Sanders, my assistant. Adorable, isn't he? Just peachy. You'll see him from time to time when I'm out on business. He gestures for me to follow him down on the pass. While you were asleep, I got your credentials verified and approved. You'll be working under me for the time being. Cool. And now is as good of a time as any to let you to let you in on something. Artemis turns to look at me with a very serious look on his face. 
I'm well aware that you know more than you say about our base of operations. When you are above the surface, you are not to mention anything incriminating to anyone, even to your fellow employees, unless told otherwise. If you were a bit less vague, I might have a clue as to what you are talking about. How stupid can one man possibly be? I just roll my eyes. I'm starting to get used to this petty attempts at trying to get under my skin. Optimus pulls out the remote to my collar and tense up. I'm not a big fan of repeating myself. If you don't listen to me, whatever happens is on you. An Arcadia collar can do more than just send electricity through your body. It records and transmits everything you say to the higher-ups. If they find out your lips are loose, they won't hesitate to kill you right then and there. They can tighten the collar to prevent you from talking and send enough volts of electricity to fry your brain. It's even possible to detonate it no matter where you are on this planet. Artemis tucks the remote back into his pocket before he exits. Why are you telling me all this? What's the catch? Artemis smirks as he pulls down the turtleneck he's wearing, sewing his own Arcadia collar. What's the fun in it if I don't give you a fighting chance? In the distance, we can see Jasper jogging to try to catch up to us. We can talk more candidly about about this later on. Just not now, understand? I got it, I got it. Ultimate smiles. Good. Ultimate gives me a tour of the main building. It reminds me a lot of Tensia. Very pretentious and sterile. By the way, your roommate will be arriving today. Excuse me? My what? You're excused. You're fucking kidding me. Have I ever lied to you? Yes. What's the size? Honestly, I thought you'd be more open to the idea. You should know that I work better alone. Where is this good? Wait, where is, where is a good thing you're not alone anymore, new recruit? My snout twitches in irritation. Don't worry, it's more of a front than anything. You're used to lying to others, yes? You'll be doing most of your work down below. However, space has been rather scarce. Can't I just sleep in a storage closet or something? I'm afraid not. As a new recruit, you need to familiarize yourself with the more mundane aspects of working here. Such as, for starters, you could remove that stick up your ass and learn to enjoy yourself. I can't imagine working here would be enjoyable in the slightest. You have a poor imagination. Use this in as, as an excuse to broaden your horizons. Hmm. Out of boy. And here are your new living arrangements. You'll start out small, but if you produce satisfactory results, I could pull some strings for you to get better comma, better accommodations. Gee, thanks. Love adding more things to my ever-growing list of debts. I do too. We have so much in common. Here's your key card. Be sure not to lose it. Wouldn't want to add more to that list after all. I snatch it and then push past the weasel. Shut up. I take my rifle off of my back and then place it against the wall. There's only one room, but it's pretty big. The bunk bed or the bunk beds are built into the wall to save space. The common area on the other side is circular, with a curved couch and coffee table. Across from our bunk beds is a serviceable kitchen. Everything is obnoxiously night, obnoxiously white. It's almost blinding. It smells clean too. If you want to cook anything, there's a tablet for you to order ingredients. The service man will personally deliver them to you. The showers on this floor are communal, you'll, but you'll have your own toilet past that door on the right. And don't worry, your collar doesn't care about getting wet. Artemis rambles on without letting me get a word in. Eventually, I resort to interrupting him. 
Am I allowed to leave whenever I want? Oh, absolutely. You're not a prisoner. Just remember that the Arcadia Collar will track each and every step you take. It would be in your best interest to not wander too far without giving prior notice. Ornibus flashes his stupid smile. I get it. I won't pull on my la on my least two months. See? You're learning. Ornibus's axiom beeps. He swipes through a few screens with a serious look on his face. Well, I was hoping to at least get a sour before getting back to work. Oh no, does that mean you're leaving already? I'm heartbroken. Don't you worry, I'll be back later tonight to give you your first missing. Jesus, already? Welcome to Resume, Lance Crager. We worked tirelessly to make the world a better place. Fantastic. Better hurry before that collar of yours zaps you or something. You really think they need to pull that with me? Unlike some people, I know my place and I'm willing to do my job correctly. Then you should be a good example of get the fuck out. My, if someone's impatient. Needs some alone time? He can find some quality lotion in the water closet. Out! I growl. Audubon spells pretentiously. Of course, your highness. With that, the weasel makes his way out of my room. The door slides shut automatically. Out of frustration, I spit on the floor. Then I look around the room for any potential cameras. I wouldn't be surprised if they burnt the place. Although, I guess there's not much point while I'm wearing this collar. My eyes immediately veer toward the bathroom. What the fuck is that lotion? The running water makes it difficult to hear. Before I got in, I test how loud the, the door was with the sour on. I should be able to pick up on if someone enters. I technically work here now, so I shouldn't be as tense as I am. Still, never know what these freaks would stoop to. It's been a while since I've had a decent sour. I decided that if I can't do anything outwardly rebellious, I'll at least take advantage of their amenities when I can. Despite being communal, each of the sours have their own separate style and locking door. I made sure no one else was in there. I need some time alone. I take the opportunity to give myself a, as good of a rinse as I can. I need to get my own shampoo. None of the ones in here particularly appeal to me. It gets the job done, I guess. I've heard the door open twice so far, making me freeze each time. Both times it was just them taking a piss, washing their paws, and leaving. The stall is still locked, but I, but I can't be too careful. Hmm. I feel like I'm on a infiltration mission again. Doubt anyone's made it this far, though. Lucky me. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm way too tense right now. I eyed the battle a lotion Artemis teased me about. The thought of doing something that he suggested basically bite my lip. With a grunt, I lean down to pick it up and at least there's and at least smell it. Smells like vanilla. Hmm. I'm really fucking pent up, but I don't need his advice. I've been fine up until now without his fancy bullshit. It'll just rinse off anyway. I'll save it for when I'm done in here. I set the bottle back down and realized I've gotten hard thing about how to blow off some of the stress. I'll sigh before getting down to business. I spent longer than normal in the bathroom. My axiom hasn't made any noises, so I guess I'm not needed quite yet. On my way back to my room, I pass by a few people who look at me curiously before they whisper to each other. It takes effort not to growl at them for staring, and just scoff and try to ignore them. It's awkward walking around the halls and just towels. I need to make, make it a habit of sour late at night. While carrying my clothes, a woman threw my pants pocket for the key card Artemis gave me.
The second the door slides open, I met with yet another person I've never seen before. He's crouched down and has his back to the door while he's inspecting the room. His ears perk to my direction at the sound of the door opening. Oh, hello there. Oh, fuck, don't tell me. You must be Lance Crager. It's nice to meet you. I groan. Yes, that's me. I assume you're my roommate then? That I am. He gets up to greet me enthusiastically. I thought he might be a wolf at first, but upon closer inspection, I'd say he's a Siba Inu. The fur pattern checks out. Never seen a blue one, though. It looks like we're about the same height, but he's definitely wider than I am. The name's Benjamin, Benjamin Amos, though most people just call me Benji. It's nice to meet you. You already said that. Look, I'm kind of... Without even hesitating, Benjamin gives me a bell hug. My instincts go into overdrive. My arms are free, to, are free for the sudden embrace I prepare to use them. I hope we can get along well. This is only my first day, but if you need anything, let me know. Get off me. I warn this man in his sudden intrusiveness. He startled and loses his grasp, giving me a chance to slip away. With a swift movement, I need, I need him in the gut. While he is about to fall to his knees, I grab him aggressively by the arm and whip him around until he's in a chokehold. If you want to see the end of next week, you're going to stay as far as you can away from me. I have no interest in getting close to you or anyone who works here. Now that you understand, don't speak. I can feel both of our heartbeats. Mine is fast but stable. His is completely erratic. He meekly was... He meekly nods. He's shaking. After a moment, I can smell the fresh scent of blood coming from somewhere. I snap back to my senses. A spot bright red liquid running down his arm as he's struggling to escape. Fuck. Fuck. So much for being discreet. It hasn't even been a day and I'm being reckless. He could easily report me. I can only imagine how well that go. I don't have time to be pulling stunts like this. I have to figure out how to get this collar off of me and get out of here. I need to weigh myself in and think things through carefully. As I am now, I have little to no autonomy. I forget that I'm stuck in this city game all that set me up in. I clip my tongue at this rate, I can already tell I'm going to die working for these assholes. I loosen my grip on his neck and let him go. The zebra drops to his knees, catches his breath, and scampers a few feet away from me. Taking a closer look, I can see just how much blood is dripping onto the floor. If this guy really wanted to harm me, he could have done so. As he is, as he is now, he just looks like a harmless dog fearing for his life. The last marks on his arm begin to stain, begin staining a deeper red the more blood spills out. Okay, I need you to stand up. Can you do that? He weakly nods. Good, here, let me help you. Upon looking at my paw, I see I scrape some of his fur off his arm as well. I don't think he's in a lot of pain, but he's definitely scared. S sorry about that. I, uh, sorry. His ears are laid back, and he's avoiding looking at me. I can't believe how much of a fuck up I am. Anywhere at myself, I shake my head. Look, you don't need to apologize. If, if, if anything, I'll simply the one saying sorry. Let me take a look at your arm. He nods before turning back to me. I think there's a first aid kit in here somewhere. Hang on. Okay. I'm just improvising in an attempt to defuse the situation I forced upon myself. It's a goddamn hospital. I made sense for that 
It makes sense for them to have those lying around, right? I exhale in relief as I find one in a cabinet. Alright, now hold still. I'll clean it and wrap it up. Benjamin doesn't say anything as I pass him up. Having this experience with external injuries like this, Perks are trying to serve as a mercenary. They're trying to survive as a mercenary. And this will take me very long to finish. That should be good. Thank you. He's still shaking. Okay, look, I'm really, really sorry about earlier. It's been a while since I felt this guilty over something. It came at me so fast that I didn't have time to register what was going on. I panicked and I lashed out. It's not an excuse, but I'm sorry. Benjamin turns his head to look at me, still hanging it low. I, uh, it wouldn't have happened if I didn't surprise you like that. Again, it's not your fault. Do you know anything about me? No, nothing. And I'll tell you a little. I've been a mercenary for the better part of a decade. In order to survive, I had to develop certain instincts. It's still not an, an excuse, but I thought you should know that I don't take surprises well. If you need to, you can report me or whatever. Maybe they'll transfer me to another facility or something. Oh no, don't worry. I mean, you did kind of scare me. But hearing your explanation, I can see how a surprise bear hug could spook you. Benjamin knocks on his head. My wife always said I jumped without thinking. I should have asked you before doing that. Hell, you were completely naked. Eh? With the uh, speaking now. Now that the situation has calmed down, Benjamin covered his eyes with his paw. Sorry, but could you put some clothes on? Oh. I'm completely naked. I must have lost my towels in the commotion. Sure, just give me a second. I walked before heading to my belongings. What a great first impression. Once we clean up and make ourselves presentable, we make our way to the cafeteria. Benjamin swore again that he wouldn't try to report me. To make up for everything and offer to treat Benjamin to a meal. I owe him this month at least. He comes up with a different excuse each time someone asks what happened to him. He's a terrible liar. Benjamin doesn't know the area any better than I do, which doesn't help. It takes a bit of looking around, but I eventually find a cafeteria that Artemis mentioned during our short tour. It's rather big with lots of people in line. It makes me a little nervous seeing resume soldiers in uniform again. I guess I'm on their side now, wondering how things work. You sure you're not in pain or anything? Oh yes, I'm fine. Being tough is one of my few strengths. I see. As we get closer to the front of the line, I take a look at the menu only to realize I don't recognize the currency being used. Uh, Benjamin? Seriously. Benji is fine. Uh, right, listen, Benji. Do they not take plumes here? That's all I have. Oh, do you not get your welcome package yet? Welcome package? Yeah, they send it to your axiom, I think. Benjamin awkwardly tries to turn on his axiom. I just got mine after orientation earlier today, so I'm not the best at using it. But, ah, uh, there it is. Benji tries to sell me his screen. I don't mention that I can't see it clearly yet, though. We pay for meals with credits instead of plumes. I already got a month's worth of pay to start with. After that, we gotta earn. We gotta earn them. I see. I take out my axiom, and it's sifted through my messages. I stare at, at a notification from Artemis. I apparently got a month ago. 
I didn't bother reading the whole thing, but it looks like he sent me some stuff. I opened the attachments, adding the contents of my axiom. What's wrong? You look angry. It's cause I am. Anyway, order whatever you want. Like I said, it's my treat. Maybe stomach growls and he starts to nod, starts to drool. Don't gotta tell me twice. I once before glancing at my credits. Maybe I just made another mistake. So you were a farmer before you, before getting recruited, huh? Benzie brings the bowl of soup up to his mouth to slurp the rest of the contents before answering me. Ah, yeah, that's right. After my wife died, I didn't really have much of a choice. She was a breadwinner, after all. I didn't have an education like her. Farming seemed like an okay solution at the time. I see. Sorry to hear about your wife. It's okay. I do miss her quite a lot, though. Here, I have a picture. Benji takes out a locket that had been hidden under his shirt, showing me a fuzzy photo of his family, which makes it hard to see details. I guess that makes sense. Not many people can afford a proper camera. That was my wife, Sky. We're holding, we're holding out, Jean and Lisa. She points at them with enthusiasm. They're beautiful. They're what keeps me going. My partner, Aiden, is taking care of them right now. They live in the middle of the country while I try to work in the big city. He's about as well off as I am. That is to say, not at all. So landing this job is really going to help out. Mm. I sympathize with him, but I don't. But I know he doesn't realize how much shit he's gotten into. What about you? Do you have a family? That catches me off guard. I think back to the crew for a moment before taking another bite of food. No, it's been just me for as long as I can remember. Oh, well, maybe we can take a trip to visit Aiden. He's a great cook and wouldn't mind setting up another plate. Huh. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'll think about it. There you are. I was wondering where you had wandered off to. This is my mood starts to improve, it sounds again. We look behind ourselves. We look behind ourselves to see Artemis walking up. Benji immediately stands up at them bells. Hello, sir. Hope you're doing well this evening. At ease, Benji. Seriously, you needn't be that formal with me. We're all a part of the same team, after all. Y yes, sir. He was the back of his head seamlessly, but the bandages catch Artemis' attention. His gaze shifts to me. Hello there, Mr. Quaker. Hmm. I almost I take another bite of food. My heavens, what happened to your arm, Benji? That's about talking to Benji. He looks at me when he asks that. Oh, I uh, slipped and uh, hit my arm on the counter a few times. I grimace at his crappy excuse. At least he's still trying to cover for me. Do you need something, sir? I need my and end my sentence with a sarcastic intonation. As a matter of fact, I do. Your first assignment has been finalized. If you would be so kind as to follow me. Sorry, Benji. I'll see you later. I guess. Oh, okay. Good luck out there. I'll see you. I'm sure you'll do fine. I now before getting out to follow Artemis out of the cafeteria. Artemis directs me to a discreet elevator at the end of the hall. Once the door is closed, he speaks up. Glad to see that you two are getting along. I'm sure you are. If you wanted to cover his wound up, you should have given him a proper excuse yourself. That was painful. Don't have to tell me twice, I panicked. Don't make a habit of attacking your roommate. There's only so much I can do to protect you. Surprised you would even go to the trouble of doing that. I don't fuck around when it comes to furthering our goals. I hope you'll remember that in the future. We'll see. Watch the elevator swing above the door. I notice just how far underground we've gone. Um, where are we going? Dario wants you to try your hand 
at taking care of someone in the sub-levels. I'm not sure if it's a sick joke or not. I'm not much of a caretaker. That's why I said, however, he was advised that you have a unique insight and would be perfect for the job. What the hell? That's all the information I have. Even I don't know what that man's thinking half of the time. We're here. Keep your voice down. She might be asleep. Whatever. Good boy. I wrinkle my snout as we make our way down the corridors. It's really warm down here. Wait, when you said caretaker, you mean like all of us starts and starts us in front of a pair of opposing doors. Yes, you're going to take care of someone on sales with the other assigned employees. You will be notified ahead of time when it's your turn. You are to not tell her anything you wouldn't tell someone like Benji. Artemis starts us in front of a pair of imposing doors. Yes, you're going to take care of someone on sales with the other assigned employees. You will be notified ahead of time when it's your turn. And you are to not tell her anything you wouldn't tell someone like Benji. Artemis enters a complicated code into a, a number pad. The doors open soon after he finishes. It almost feels as though steam is pouring out of the room. It's so hot. I expect to see a person trapped in a test tube or something. What I met with is much more jarring. It's an extremely well furnished room. A bedroom? There's someone in an electric wheelchair on the, on the left side of the room. It looks like they're watering plants. She notices us at the door, stopping what she's doing to look at us. Soon after, she grimaces, going back to watering her plants. Uh, if I had known you were coming, I would have pretended to be asleep again. Nice to see you too, Sergeant Two. Hmm. Well, what do you want this time? I'm busy. Temperamental as always. Artemis gestures to me in order to grab her attention. I just wanted to introduce you to one of our of our new recruits. who will be taking care of you from time to time. His name is Lance Crager. I do hope you two can get along. I see you're passing off your work to someone else yet again. Cut me some slack. I'm a busy man. Speaking of, I really must be going. When you, when you want to leave, Lance, just head back the way we came. With your credentials, the lift will take you back to the ground floor. Toodles. And just like that, the weasel leaves me alone with this woman with no contest whatsoever. If you have no business, you can be on your way. I'll be fine. I literally don't know what my business is. What am I supposed to even do? Don't ask me. I'm usually asleep when y'all come down here. Hmm. Why is it so hot in here? For my plants, obviously. They need a good amount of humidity. I start to walk around the room to get a better look at everything. There's book sales on the right side of the room. All the books look ancient. A good sized bed sits at the back corners, covered in stuffed animals. It looks like no one's used it in a while. I thought Artemis had bad manners. Why are you just walking around a girl's room without permission? So I just... Haven't seen stuff like this before, is all. I'm not surprised. It took them a little... It took them a while to find even this much... Them. The high-ups of your godforsaken organization. Hey, it's not my organization. I'm not exactly happy to be working here. The woman starts watering her plants and then looks over at me. Her hair immediately catches my attention. It's completely white. I can't tell how old she is, but she reminds me a lot of Cyrus. They treat you too, huh? More or less, they're doing what I can. More or less, I'm, I'm just doing what I can to survive. How noble of you. Nothing noble about me. At least you're honest. Don't get used to it. The woman laughs at that, not in a mocking way, but a genuine laugh. Huh, it's been a while since they've sent someone 
who's somewhat tolerable down here. The boy must be in, the, in hell if that's the case. That would make sense. We're only a couple floors above hell, after all. Now it's my turn to spark. What are you, what are you in for anyway? Oh no, I'm not going to tell you that on a first date. Gross. Woman sets her watering can down, and then uses her electric wheelchair to cross the room to me. At this distance, I can see the many cables attached to the back of her chair. Are they connected to her? I'll make things easy for you at least. I'm not allowed to leave, but I can ask for things to detain me when I'm stuck here. You want me to run errands for you? More or less, being trapped in a room for as long as I have can make you go crazy. It's why I sleep a lot. How long has it been? Ah, uh -huh. not on the first date. I don't want to get you into trouble either. I'm in loads of it. I mean, loads of it already. I'm sure I could manage. She chuckles again. Fearless, ain't you? Kinda have to be. I said my ass him. It's a little past three in the afternoon. I was going to try to do, try to do shopping before they give me a missing that takes me off base. Anything you need, huh? The woman claps her hands in excitement. Oh, okay, okay. I've been thinking about a new name for a while. It's been far too long. Lilith is a cool name and all, but doesn't really fit me, I think. But what? In that case, feel free to call me Vivian. It's nice to meet you, Lance Quager. Likewise, I guess. So we'll start chapter 14 next time. So, her name is Viridian, but she has many other names she goes by, kind of like Lance does. And I, I wonder if she's kind of like Cyrus. She's kind of like a owner, I mean like an organ, you know, a person that they take organs out of or stuff out of her. Kind of like what, Cooper? I mean, kind of like what Cyrus is. I mean, she has white hair like Cyrus. And after after attacking that man, what's his name again? I forgot. But anyway, Benji. Yeah. After attacking Benji, he, you know, um, Lance, he went into damage mode and decided to be all apologetic to him. So, he can be a nice guy when he chooses to be. I mean, we saw that with when he was with Cyrus some of the time and we got to see that part of him again. That doesn't change the fact that he sold Cyrus. That doesn't change anything. He's still a bad person for that. You know. Um, Artemis has a collar on him as well. So they. So they key control of him also make sure he doesn't go out doesn't fall out of line too 
So, if he has a call that that, I don't think he's that high up in the company. I mean, he's probably probably um has a higher higher rank, but not like he's not really that high up in the company. If he has a color on him as well, I mean, it's kind of like a slave color for these people to have. And you say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, and you'll get zapped by it, or it will it will choke you, or it might even explode, like detonate, and you just die. <laughs> It's a brutal way of of controlling people. Now that person that we first saw, that raccoon, I didn't see a, a collar on him, nor did we see a nor did I see a um, collar on um, Benji. So I don't know. Maybe the developers of the VN meant to put collars on them but decided not to for some reason but I don't know so let's start chapter 14 next time thank y'all very much for watching goodbye